Hello everyone, my name is Dorian and welcome to Imola. We are with the F3 doing a track guide and I'm just going to show you guys the lap real quick and then we're going to go over it corner by corner. If you enjoy it, leave a like and if you want to see more track guides and race videos, then subscribe to the channel. In the description, there's also a link to my Discord, that's where you can find the setup. That's it, see you guys on the track. Okay, so we're coming up to turn number one, but the first thing I want to mention is how difficult the first couple of laps are. So you're really going to have to be very careful on cold tires here. With what I did with the setup, I tried to mitigate that just a little bit, but any more than that will really slow the car down. So I made very small tweaks. See if you like it. If not, you can consult me on Discord and I'll try to help you make it more stable. Uh, but that will come off at the expense of pace. So, you know, keep that in mind. Very tricky first couple of laps. There's not a lot of grip at all, so you're gonna have to be careful. Nothing you can do about it. Now, the 100 is your friend for turn number one. We're just gonna be looking for a breaking point slightly past that. Call it the 95. Peaking at around, I would say, 75%. And downshifting very quickly from six. Well, actually, not very quickly. Downshifting rather lazily, actually, from sixth into fourth. As I mount, as I put it in fourth, you can see I'm already at around 50% pressure and releasing more and more as I begin to turn in. Staying in fourth throughout this sector. Now, I'm, I'm trying to mount just a little bit of the curb. I would say just the red stuff about halfway through it. The very important bit here is just to keep the fall in while you mount the curbs. So I'm already back on the power and that's going to give me stability because if I don't use power here, the car is going to want to kick out. And so I'm slowly squeezing the power from zero all the way to 100%. So at this point, I want to stay committed to 100%. There will be situations where on the second apex, you will have to lift just a little bit before it, like right here. And that will give you a little more stability on the exit because right here on the exit is where it wants to kick out. So you're going to have to keep that in mind, especially with cold tires. But here I was able to stay committed. The line was clean enough and I stayed flat out. The whole way through taking the car all the way to the curb on the outside and from this point on it's a very easy corner just stick to the left let it run wide don't you know don't try to shut the door too much don't try to turn in too hard there's no point now looking for another breaking point here this is this is a very tricky uh, uh, chicane so basically is it a chicane i'm not sure i think it's a chicane anyways you break right at the 50 very softly, very, very softly from sixth into fifth gear. Trail breaking a little bit into the corner, but already releasing it because the car has a tendency to over rotate here. So I don't need any additional weight on the fronts. And I'm going to carry the speed into the first apex. And you can see I'm, in, I'm initiating a little, bit of, a little bit of braking here until I straighten out the wheel. And then I'm giving it more to downshift into fourth. So just downshifted into fourth. And releasing it again to 
turn it in the second apex. Already back on the power at this point because I'm committing to the fact that I'm going to mount this curb on the exit fully. Now, there are several, there are several times where you'll meet this type of curb on this track. And sometimes you want to commit to mounting it fully. Sometimes you just want to avoid it altogether. So at this point, I just want to go all the way and get back to the track. Now, if I wouldn't have gone all the way and maybe pulled a 50-50, like, like so, I would have grinded the bottom of the car and really would have compromised my exit speed. And it happens in another corner that I'll talk about at the end of the track guide. Taking the car to the right, looking for a braking point. I'm going to keep the car in fourth gear. I, I'm not going to upshift into, into fifth. There's not a lot of time to gain by it, and it's going to compromise your braking. So I'm going to keep the car in fourth, right on the limiter for as long as I need to before I brake. And I'm going to brake. Uh, I'm not exactly sure on the 50, maybe with cold tires. I think slightly past it. Maybe this little white square, as you can see here. You have the triangle here of the axis route. So when, when the car crosses it, that's where it's like one Mississippi and I brake. Braking at around 50-55% pressure, releasing pretty quickly. You're going uphill, the car's gonna brake very quickly. You don't need a lot of pressure and you don't, need, you don't need a lot of distance as well. Staying in third gear, so I'm downshifting in from fourth into third. It seems like this corner might be better in second, but it doesn't. From everything I've tried, third is better because you have all this camber and you, it's a very wide corner so it's gonna hook you really well you're, get, you're gonna be able to carry a lot of exit uh, a lot of entry speed sorry and on the exit the car has a tendency to snap it's almost always gonna feel like the rear end is going light because of the altitude change i think so third gear really helps with that so i'm trail braking all the way into the halfway point let's call it the apex and already back on the power from this point on I should have squeezed it a little more gently and a little bit earlier, but that was good enough. Might have missed about half a tenth from it. Already at full throttle at this point, and I'm going to open up the wheel. If you do it in second, it's going to snap. You can catch it, but sometimes it's, un it's unrecoverable. And even in third gear, I'm going to have to catch it a little bit. Now, the easy thing to do here, the smarter thing, will be to use this curb to prevent the snap oversteer. So... I'm going to open up the wheel as much as I need to so the, the, the back end doesn't snap. I'm not trying to use it as my racing line unless the rear end starting to snap. If it was a little bit looser here, then I would have gone all the way. There's no off track. So I'm using it just to make sure I'm not snapping the rear end. Now, uh, really fast corner. Fastest on the track, I think. Or one of the fastest ones. I'm going to break slightly past the 50. And I'm going to stay in fifth gear. So very soft on the brakes, I'm not trying to change the weight too much, the weight balance too much, so you can see I'm, I'm staying a little bit on the throttle as I do it, around, I don't know, 40%, 35% pressure, trail braking all the way into the apex, don't release it too soon because you really want to be as tight here as possible, you don't need to mount it, in fact I wouldn't, but putting the left wheels on the, on the white line here really helps. You can see I'm very aggressive on my return very early, but actually not that aggressive. I'm quite linear towards the end. You can see I'm just squeezing it back just to prevent that little bit of understeer that you would get here. Mounting the curb all the way to the outside. Don't go here. This is an off track. Just use the green stuff. And we're through. Fifth gear throughout. Up to sixth. I'm going to stay flat out for a very long time here. So I'm going to initiate the turn in right at the 50 and I'm looking for that first apex and as soon as I'm about to reach it I'm gonna start lifting and the whole point here is just being very very gentle and very very predictable with the car let it know what you're gonna do before you're gonna do it or else it will just it won't behave it won't comply to anything you want it to do it'll lock up it'll understeer it'll oversteer it'll do all sorts of things because of all the altitude changes here it's, it's really tricky. There's not a lot of grip. So I'm just lifting at this point. And then I'm initiating a little bit of braking. You can see how soft I am. This is a very untraditional corner. Gradually increasing the brakes. Letting the car know that I'm going to ask for it for a lot of braking.
staying at around 35%, downshifting lazily, letting the car run wide. Very important to use this curb on the uh, on the outside because it's going to open up the, this corner just enough. You can make it with a good pace without getting off track on the exit. Still braking. And as soon as I put in third just now, I'm going to start to initiate the turn in. That will be at the end of this cone of uh, this of this uh, curb right here. Releasing the brakes as I do. And you can see how early I'm going back to the power from this point on. Sorry about my dog. Now, very early on the power because I opened up the corner. Waiting a little bit on the 100% part, just a little bit of modulation, around 60%, as I straighten out the wheel back to 100. Any additional 100 RPM that you can carry here on the exit is just vital for your exit speed because you're going uphill. So, a little bit more entry speed, a little bit more exit speed is just going to make a huge difference in terms of time. This is pretty much as much as you can cut from this curb. Any more will be an off track. And a little bit more than that will actually be a time penalty. So we really have to be careful here. Now, this chicane is a menace. Very tricky. You can lose or gain half a second here and not even figure out what you've done different. So we have the, the tree before the 50. So we have the tree that's on the 50 and the tree before the 50. That, that will be our breaking point. I'm not really looking at the tree. I'm looking at the 50. But just so we have the reference, this is where I start breaking. Breaking it around, I would say, 50-55% peak and immediately releasing it because I'm trying to avoid overheating the front. We're going to ask for a lot at this point. I'm going to turn in in third gear. And I'm going to mount this curb like crazy. Trail breaking ever so slightly into the corner. Mount it quite a lot, putting my left wheel, my right wheel right around here. And I'm going to release the brakes. Let the car go neutral for a second, land from the curb, tiniest dab of the brakes, and into second gear just now. Now, you can take it in third throughout and exit the corner in third. Sometimes I would just get understeer on the exit here, and uh, that's, that's kind of my problem here. So I know for a fact some people have a lot of oversteer on the exit here, so third could be better for them. I guess it's a matter of driving style, conditions, setup, etc., etc. So for me, second works best. Do give it a try in third, see what works better for you. Tiniest dab of the brakes, turning in again, mounting it quite aggressively as much as you want to cut it at this point because anymore the car will just get too upset. And I'm going to open up the wheel as soon as I can to avoid the oversteer. And I'm back on the power already, around 50%, squeezing more and more out of it. And already back at 100% in second gear, using the green stuff on the exit, and you're through. Now, hugging the inside here on the left and on the right, short route, gives you a little bit of time. And we're going to break, if we have the 100 here and the 50 here, then we're going to break, I would say, at the 70. So right around here, maybe 75, maybe 65, I'm not entirely sure. Peaking very high because this is, you're going downhill. So you're going to have to reduce a lot of speed very quickly. Peaking at around 80%, 75%. And releasing it into the corner around 50% at this point as I initiate the turn in in third gear. And you want to clip this apex just a little bit, trail break into it. Don't want to clip it too much because you will beach the car and get upset. As I dismount the curb, I'm going to start accelerating again. A little bit of modulation here to prevent the understeer. So there's over rotation on entry and understeer on the exit. You got to keep that in mind. And that applies for a lot of the corners on this track. And I'm committing to the fact that I'm going to mount this curb fully with all four wheels. There is no other way to take this corner quickly. This entire two, two corner section, you have to mount this curb fully with this car at least. You can't go half seas and do a pull a 50-50 here. You can't stay just on the tarmac because you're just going to be too slow. You're going to have to commit fully to get the car on the curb. As you can see, a good tip for mounting this curb is just to straighten out the wheel as soon as you, you're about to fully mount it. And that will keep it from going upset. Getting upset, I mean. You can you'll see the modulation already back to full throttle at this point. Very easy turning point here. You can see the, the change in the 
tarmac in tarmac the the color variation here so i'm going to start to turn in and lift right at this point tiniest dab of the bricks probably not necessary you can just lift maybe with uh while you're drafting that might be required and I'm looking to clip this curb just a little bit, not too early though, actually as late as you can. So right around here, and I'm already back on the power. So what, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to prevent the understeer with the power. Because usually uh, you'll just get a lot of understeer on the exit here. If, you, if you're aggressive and you're late into the corner, you're not going to have understeer. In fact, you're going to be fighting oversteer, as I did here. Already back on the, at 100%, even before I fully dismounted the curb. You can see I'm catching the car a little bit, and the reason for that, because on this curb, I don't want to fully mount it, because it will cost me quite a lot of straight line speed. Now, if you're constantly mounting this curb, people are going to overtake you in a race. Not only that you're going to lose a little bit of time in qualifying or whatever, but people are going to find it very easy to overtake you in a race. They're just going to concentrate on a late apex here and get a better run from you. So you really need to focus on this corner a lot. Make sure you don't mount it fully. If you have to, do it. But definitely don't go half seas. Like this was just a little bit. But if you put half the car on the curb, it's going to grind and lose a lot of time. I would just try to prevent uh, mounting it altogether. Maybe just a little bit with the right tire. But that's it. And that's going to give us a 135.591. Hope you guys enjoyed this track guide. If you did, leave a like. If you want to see more track guides, then subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments what you think. That's it. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.